Hi, this is Phyllis Raleigh with Goddess University. I'm also the author of All My Heroes Were Hoes, Life Lessons from the Dungeon. This little piece I've written is called Burn Your Jock Straps. In the 70s, American women burned their bras as a symbol of freedom from what we then recognize as the cultural and religious bondage of our time. In my opinion, men have suffered under those same bondages for much longer and are long overdue a symbolic burning of their own. In her TED Talk, Brene Brown shares the story of a husband and father who challenged Brene about his freedom to express his vulnerability, an adjective culturally that has not been associated with the definition of a man. My generation of women grew up believing we no longer had to live within the sexist roles of a stay-at-home mom, yet we chuckle at the stay-at-home dads. We demanded more than the secretarial job, but we didn't trust the male secretary, and he's been jeered and dis di discriminated against in the marketplace. We trust female doctors, but we won't be alone in the room with a male nurse. And we believe female politicians will care more for family values, which suggests their male counterparts don't love their families. We have locked men into the same sexist stereotypes that women have long fought to break. The pendulum of rights for one sex has got to stop swinging at the cost of the other. We reignite discrimination when we focus on the pendulum swing seeking justice for ourselves and not for all. And why haven't we allowed men the space to weep or to express other emotions beside anger, sports, and sexual interests? What is it about stereotypes we are so comfortable with for others except when it comes to ourselves? I too am guilty of wanting the romantic and sensitive lover, but not at the cost of my own expectations for the take charge kind of guy based on my perceived roles from fantasy writers and my Christian upbringing. In the last few years, I've seen a continual rise in cross-dressing. I no longer call this a fetish, as a fetish is anything that stimulates you sexually. But this sincere desire to enjoy the feel of women's clothing or the beauty of a makeover or hours of painful electrolysis and waxing is on the rise. Some men have shared with me they enjoy getting pampered with nails, massages, and facials. And when I ask the reason why, their number one answer is because it feels good. And they're right, because that's why we as females do it. We like it and so do guys. For these men, cross-dressing has become a way of expressing how to love the other side of themselves. It has become the healthy exploration of the feminine within. Surprisingly, a fair bit of my coaching clients are not interested in sexual fantasies with cross-dressing. They still enjoy sex, but the confusion comes in when they have to decide what role to take with their more feminine and passive feelings. The aggressive male pursuer sounds great from a female perspective, as we get to say yes or no to their advances, but emotionally, pursuit is exhausting. I like the song from Leon Redbone, I'd Like to Be Seduced, where he wistfully fantasizes about a woman pursuing him as an emotional partner. And feeling sexy is not just a feminine adjective. Clothes, specifically lingerie, is designed to enhance the feeling of sexiness, and men deserve the right to feel and look sexy in whatever they choose. After my first Burning Man experience, I was asked, what was my favorite part of the trip? With the hundreds of images and experiences that flashed in my head, time and time again, I was awestruck by the masculine beauty of men in skirts. So in my second year, I hosted a men in skirts fashion show. Most of my contestants were straight guys who had a great fashion sense, and it was a pleasure to appreciate masculine beauty and style on the catwalk. And cross-dressing goes both ways. For women crossing to their masculine side, it has boosted their independence and bootstrap kind of strength. Like Casey Leglar, the first female to sign a male modeling contract. Once menopause hit, I questioned my own surge of masculine energy as a female, especially when the chin hair started to sprout when I didn't have enough sex. 
Cross-dressing was a comfortable expression of power and independence. And I wondered if I would enjoy settling into that role permanently. A wise friend and play partner who had crossed over from female to male said to me, it's not necessary as long as you can express both of yourselves as they come up. That advice saved me tons of emotional and mental questioning and invasive medical procedures. It freed me to do what I can do best, be myself. And I learned to solve the chin hair problem with more orgasms. Check out my video on the Fountain of Youth about getting your vitamin O. My cross-dressing friends have taught me that there is a wealth of insight, emotional expansion, creativity, and self-acceptance that only comes when we accept both of our natures. That's androgyny, which is not about trying to pass as the other sex or changing sexes, but accepting our duality as natural and normal. We have both sets of hormones for a reason, because we are all androgynous beings. We all have the same body parts. Some are innies, some are outies, some of us have both. But the problem comes is that we've accepted the duality of nature as a polarity. Remember, God is also goddess, both masculine and feminine. It is the one or singular source. The one created duality with this cool gift of sex so that we become the self-generating pieces of art. Talk about a great design feature. Androgyny is a comfortable expression of both the masculine and feminine hormones in our body. Now with the spread of religion around the world, we learn that God lives within us all. I know Christianity best, so let me throw in a quote from Jesus about self-love. In Mark and Matthew, he's quoted as saying, Love your neighbor as yourself. We have focused on thinking, on the outward expression of love, but let's not forget the first commandment is to love ourselves. And like RuPaul says, if we can't love ourselves, how are we going to love someone else? Let's accept the fact that the one has given us both natures to fully be fully expressed and not suppressed or controlled. By the way, lots of archaeologists have discovered and deciphered the written history of our spiritual life. Check out this great anime of our planet's history by the folks over at Spirit Science. Now we are on the planet to create art in whatever form it takes. And that requires we use the feminine, right, or creative side of our brain. It does not matter the gender assignment we get. It does require for us to look inward for the expression of our creative self. It is a privilege to be human. And once we know that, we can start reaching for what has been lost to us, wholeness. And frankly, it is an empty pursuit trying to find love in another being without first mastering loving yourself. When we look outside ourselves for the feeling of love, acceptance, and completeness from someone else, we are chasing the part that is actually within us. We see this problem arise when our partner stops giving us the demonstrative expressions of love we've come to depend upon, and we wonder what went wrong with the relationship. Well, I did anyway. When that hole showed up in my marriage, I assumed it was time for us to move on and find love elsewhere. We consciously uncoupled, and in a recent email from my ex, he wrote, My perfection line doesn't meet my burnout line anymore. I guess that is a result of my new journey and positive outlook. It is truly an exciting discovery. Thank you. I can't think of a more beautiful gift than when someone can find the love within themselves. That happened outside our marriage. We made the space for self-discovery once we re released the mutually codependent relationship. I thank him for giving me the same freedom to wholly love myself. No matter how you express your gender, it is most important to listen to the desires of your spirit, mind, heart, instinct, and sexuality and then go meet those needs, because only you can. A partner can only guess at what you want, no matter how many times you hint or tell them. And it's not their job to meet your needs, it's yours and yours alone. I love this question posed from Teal Swan, the spiritual catalyst. 
what would someone who loves their self do? Make the investment in yourself to daily feed your spiritual, emotional, and physical needs. It's not easy if you're not used to doing it. Or if you find the concept difficult, then you're definitely in need of some practice. Start with hugging yourself, palms touching your arms for about 20 seconds, giving yourself an oxytocin hit. Close your eyes and feed yourself with self-love. After all, you are beautifully and wondrously made. Namaste, y'all.